So welcome, welcome to this uh, dialogue on marine solutions. Um, this uh, second dialogue um, are part of our vital site uh, journey, a series of uh, online events uh, toward our World Conservation Congress. Uh, this dialogue today will be uh, on marine solutions and more particularly on uh, eco-acoustic monitoring applied to marine biodiversity conservation. So we will have um, two great experiences of uh, eco-acoustic monitoring, one in the Indian Ocean uh, with uh, the Korkopa project, and one in Macaronesia uh, with uh, the Bee Charm project. Um, there will be time then for a discussion, for a question, and we will have um, as well insight from an expert uh, of the Indian Ocean, and we will continue our, our discussion. For this session, we uh, kindly invite you to respect on conviviality principle. So when you are not speaking, please you mute your microphone. If you have any question, please uh, specify it uh, using the, the chat uh, function. And when you are speaking, please uh, open your camera. So here are our speakers today, um, Aïssa Traoré, uh, Mr. Uh, Simon Ellis, Mr. Francisco Otero Ferrer, and Mr. Uh, David Obira, and I will be uh, your kind of facilitator, I'm Carol Martinez. So let's start with our first speaker. Yes, hi everyone, let me... Uh takes the floor to briefly uh, introduce you to uh, to all of them and maybe first by uh, by Carol so who is the uh, IUCN uh, senior um, uh, coordinator uh, both on on best so working on the overseas uh, since now many years and uh, also on uh, on Bioparma um, the action component working on the um, ACP uh, countries now back to to Aisa. So Aisa has, uh, has uh, joined the uh, IUCN to uh, work as a program officer for uh, for Panorama, uh, which will be uh, explained to you in uh, in details in a few um, in a few seconds. And uh, before she had uh, an extensive international experience uh, with uh, UNHCR, but also with uh, Francophonie and the African Union on uh, various uh, topics. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Luca. So since this event is uh, co-hosted by BEST and Panorama program, we would get, like to give you a few details on these two programs. And I will let the floor to Aisa for indicating what is Panorama. Yes, thank you, Carol. Good morning, everyone. Um, as um, Carol, thank you again for the invitation. As you might guess uh, from tagline, a panorama focus on what works. Why is that useful? People might say that you can just ignore the problem and we need first to understand this before taking, talking about solution. And generally we, we focus a lot on challenges, on problems, but panorama is more about solution. And I just uh, use the two pictures here to just show you what inspire us. What show uh, the picture also shows you a concrete options for taking actions. We have on one side a challenge, but on the other side a solution. Someone planting a tree. While we can learn from failure seeing how others have successfully tackled the challenge and understanding concrete solutions, it inspires us and makes us feel empowered. Uh, next slide, please. Panorama is a partnership initiative and uh, with IUCN, JZ, um, working as secretariat and seven other organizations. We promote solution for nature conservation and sustainable development, a non-exchange mechanism. We identify, analyze, document, and promote a specific success story from a vast range of solution providers. We have modular study format. We have replicable success factors and building block, which make a solution of a wide range of project approaches. Next slide. 
Here you have uh, what uh, um, defined best panorama. Individual representing NGO, government, institutions, academy, but also community group, which uh, will document their knowledge and experiences using a structured standardized format and describing case success factors we call building blocks. The building blocks are then adapted, combined with others and reused to inform, develop, and work as a solution in similar conservation challenges elsewhere and are adapting on an ongoing initiatives, which enable learning from successful practices. Ultimately, this lead to better decision-making about implementation of conservation, but also uh, on initiatives on focusing on what work. Here we connect the solution seeker and the solution provider. And this is all about panorama to connect people and best practices. Panorama, uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Panorama uniquely apply its solutioning approach which means combining online and offline learning. Starting from the right, the backbone of the initiative is sophisticated web platform, a searchable database of solution and bleeding blocks, which allows users to apply a wide range of filters, combine them, explore solution and building blocks within and across thematic areas. We also have face-to-face -face exchanges between solution provider and potential replicator, which is crucial from uh, a way of how, how do we get people connected. And increasingly, we use contests and award to identify and reward a large number of innovation around, around priorities thematics. We are also proud to have partnered with UNDP, Wild R to have Pathfinder Award, and currently, we also launch a new, two new thematic community I will talk about with the World Bank and IUCN World City Alliance program. Next slide, Luca. Thank you. Learning from what works. So Panorama is on one side a powerful partnership which demonstrates the value of specific conservation and development solution but contribute also to international policy agenda as the 230 Agenda for Sustainable Development, the CBD strategic plan. We also promote broader application of such solution. We also have this um, online database I will show you, but also um, how we get countries, solutions provided and solutions seeking as thematic community to get into uh, contact, exchange, what has been work uh, well for them. Next slide, Luca. Thank you. The, this is the Panorama Partnership. Um, as you can see, JZ and IUCN uh, provide an overall coordination function through a secretariat. Panorama is structured into thematic community uh, look at slide and then we see the thematic, thank you. The thematic and also slide again for the partners. Yes, thank you. We have now seven partners, uh, seven thematic community, which is structured uh, and interlink sub team. There's entry doors into Panorama for different community of practice. Each team has a coordinating institutions. We call them thematic community coordinators. They work on the approach and methodology applicable across topics, which is universal for all thematic community. They actively expand to include further topic and new partners. And this year, we are really happy to have the World Bank on board. Uh, we also have UNDP, JZ, IUCN. And as you can see, we, we're still welcoming new partners, um, ICROM, ICOMOS, we have RAR, IFOM. So the Panorama Partnership is really well known and we really want to expand it worldwide. Uh, Luca, slide. And when we say Panorama, uh, there is, we have this partnership and thematic community, but also the online database. 
And here, when you, you go into our platform, you have panorama.solutions, you have the registered um, button, you enter your name, email, when you agree to our term of reference, confirm your email address, you also can be part of Panorama platform and our community. It's really open for everyone to, to uh, um, upload solution, be a solution provider, but you can also be there to explore solutions. It's a database. We are like, not Facebook, but we are like um, Facebook for best practices and project and community getting together, engaging and have this collective exchange and learning. Thank you. Yes, and um, slide again. I think uh, this is not. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Carol. I think I'm on time. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Isa. That's perfect. So actually, the other um, we will add the question after the the session. This uh, event is co-hosted by, as I said, by Panorama and, and BEST. So let me say a few words about uh, this great initiative. It is a, uh, a European one uh, aiming at fostering action in seven regions of global importance, where are located all the European overseas, as you can see on, on this map. Um, the story of this great initiative started uh, in 2008 and is a clear, tangible uh, follow-up and uptake from a call, an important call from all the stakeholders from the EU overseas, asking for a dedicated mechanism to support conservation in all the EU overseas. So it has been designed as a flexible scheme with a quite a, a wider scope promoting conservation, but as well sustainable use of biodiversity and ecosystem services in the European overseas. And it has been a customized uh, tailored schemes since uh, uh, taking into account uh, the different needs on the ground, the different capacities, it has been offering uh, different types of uh, financial support, different types of grants in order again to address uh, the diversity of the needs and the capacities from the diverse stakeholders. In order to ease the access to this uh, European financial support, as you can see, there was no co-funding uh, for small grants, easing again the access uh, for this uh, support. The overall objective of uh, BES are indeed to facilitate the access to the European funds for the actor of the European outermost region and the European overseas countries and territories to increase the capacities of those stakeholders to access and effectively manage the European funds and to increase the visibility of the European overseas as key actors, a key contributor to the achievement of not only the European strategy and targets, but definitely the global biodiversity targets as they are hosting uh, international and global hotspots of biodiversity. This initiative has been acknowledged uh, as uh, international importance uh, by uh, the CBD, the Convention of Biological Diversity, and it is the very first uh, interregional uh, global island partnership uh, challenge. So you can see how, uh, again, the European overseas can be a real player at the international level. So what are the results of this initiative? So far, the, the, the best has been able to take stock of the situation, but as well to better profile, to better highlight what are the biodiversity importance and assets of the EU versus. So seven ecosystem profiles have been elaborated in a very collaborative and bottom-up uh, approach. And this has helped the identification of 400 new key biodiversity areas as well as uh, ecological corridors. As along this uh, key um, biodiversity area identification, the profile, the ecosystem profile um, was developed as well an important work related to the identification of the needs on the ground in terms of funding. So seven uh, regional investment strategy have been as well uh, defined, uh, articulated hand in hand with the stakeholders and actually, thanks to this very collaborative work, 
um, 450 projects ready to be funded have been identified and promoted by the stakeholders of the EU versus. In addition, um, completing this talk of the situation in terms of uh, what are the environmental uh, and biodiversity challenge in the EU versus, a very interesting overview of the existing biodiversity list species and habitat has been done in order to support uh, the European uh, institution work in order to keep on helping the EU versus. But more importantly, in addition to all this uh, knowledge um, um, update, um, BEST has been providing financial support. And to date, more than 100 projects have been funded uh, thanks to, to BEST. This represents a total investment of 20 million for uh, the European uh, Commission. And we are very happy to see that uh, the adventure is uh, keep on going since we have two calls open uh, this year under the Life for Best program and the Best 2.0 Plus program. Um, and uh, we are very happy to, to say that today, uh, more than 60 projects have been pre-selected for funding. So you can see more action on the ground will be very soon again happening. So to date, this is how the, the financial support has been implemented in the different region of uh, BEST. And you, you can see, uh, for instance, in the Indian Ocean, so far, BEST has been uh, supporting 28 projects. And in the Macaronesia region, uh, so far, BEST has been supporting three projects. But as I indicate, more are to, to come. This goes along uh, other important, I would say, impact and results. Thanks to this best project, uh, new vocations have been uh, uh, realized. Uh, thanks to the best project, 120 jobs have been created. Um, in terms of involving communities and citizens, uh, thanks to the BEST project, again, more than 650 volunteers have been mobilized. So you can see uh, the real leverage effect and mobilization impact that uh, BEST and the different projects have been able to, to do. Capacity building as well happen on the ground, as well as uh, important efforts of sensitization, raising awareness, more than 500 events uh, related to the biodiversity of the different outermost region and overseas countries and territories that have been implemented. And this reaching a circa of 50,000 people. In terms of conservation measures and enhance of uh, conservation measures, we are very happy to say that more than 475,000 square kilometers of marine and coastal area have been benefiting from best project uh, in terms of uh, additional support for enhancing the conservation. More than 1,400 species benefited from a new inventory. 12 new species have been discovered thanks to the best project and three new protected areas have been created. But the, the beauty of such a program is that it's creating new opportunity, supporting new action on the ground, but it has a real leverage effect. And as you can see, more than 40 projects continued beyond the lifespan of the best project and more than 400 collaboration has been initiated thanks to the different best project. In order to give you more details, I give you, uh, I invite you to see uh, our different best impact fact sheets we have developed for each region. You can see here, for instance, uh, the impact uh, fact sheets for the Indian Ocean, where you will find uh, all the very interesting details about what actually best and the different projects have been able to, to do uh, in terms of uh, invasive alien species of prevention and control, in terms of new assessment, in terms of uh, discovery of new species, uh, but as well in terms of job creation and um, collaboration. So please pay a visit to the website. You will learn more and see more about what the best project have been able to, to do. So I thank you again for, for your attention. We are very happy to welcome you for this um, best panorama uh, dialogue on marine solution. And I will now give the floor to our 
two uh, other speakers who will present a very interesting solution in order to recall of what Aisa has said. Uh, definitely these two best projects dealing with uh, eco-acoustic monitoring can be seen as real solution provider. So I'll hand over to Simon Elise. Maybe if I may, uh, sorry, uh, Carol, before, uh, just towards the attendees, do not hesitate to use the uh, Q&A in the chat box uh, uh, to, if you have uh, questions. And I see one from uh, Nita Cha now, so I will allow her to talk. Maybe she has, a, or he has something to, to ask. Oh, um, thank you, Carol. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Um, I'm Simon Ellis from University of Reunion Island in the Indian Ocean, and I will present you the result of the COCOPA project, which was funded by the European Commission through the BEST 2.0 um, program from January 2018 to April 2019. Um, so I, I thought I I would present after uh, Bicharm, so you will see uh, that uh, Bicharm rely on active acoustic uh, techniques, while uh, Corcopa used passive uh, monitoring to develop um, the project. Yeah. Thus, Simon, sorry to, to interrupt you, but your slides are not, uh, you're, not uh, you're not sharing your screen yet. Oh, you, you, you're still frozen on the first one. Okay, better. <laughs> so, uh, Bichand um, rely on active acoustic techniques, uh, while Corcopa was based on passive acoustic monitoring. Uh, thus, these projects are two complementary applications of underwater acoustics to conservation. The, the project targeted Europa Island in the southern uh, Mozambique Channel. And uh, the, this island is managed by the Terres Australes et Antarctique Française, the TAF, and is located at 300 kilometers from the nearest human population. So its isolation is both an opportunity and a conservation challenge. Terrestrial ecosystems are regularly monitored thanks to the presence of permanent agents, uh, which allows to implement adapted conservation measures. In contrast, uh, Europa's coral reef has been punctually monitored only three times in, in the last 10 years, although they are among the few persons of reef uh, in such a good state uh, worldwide. Uh, so in front of uh, increasing disturbances, much more frequent surveys are needed to ensure coral reef conservation. In this context, the overall objective of Corcopa was to strengthen the capacities of Europa Island managers, the TAF, for coral reef conservation by providing them an operational monitoring tool. The first specific objective was to define an ecoacoustic baseline, in other words, uh, to establish links between acoustic metrics and key ecosystem function. The second objective was to ensure the continuous monitoring of Europa's reef landscape during and after the project. And the third uh, was to contribute to the management plan with the acquired knowledge. The aim of establishing a, a baseline was to provide a key for the ecological interpretation of upcoming temporal data. This is a basic uh, scheme of the functioning of a coral reef. It highlights some of the key functions which ensure uh, this functioning. So the approach was to look for correlations between the level of these functions and uh, acoustic metrics calculated on the associated ambient sound, such as a signal amplitude or complexity in a given frequency band. Uh, to that end, we collected simultaneous um, visual and acoustic data at nine sites around Europa Island. We focused on three habitat-related functions evaluated with photogrammetric uh, 3D modeling, thanks to a partnership with uh, Isabel Urbina's PhD program. The first function evaluated was habitat complexity. We 
addition, uh, individual coral colonies were delineated on alpha mosaics, mosaics in the cover of interesting, here in red, and more complex coral in purple were computed. We also evaluated free fish related function with stereo cameras. Uh, these were uh, the level of plantivores, uh, herbivore, and predator fishes. And simultaneously, we recorded the ambient sound of each site. So these are the two most contrast contrasted uh, sites that we found. Um, rapidly, we can see um, the sound analysis tool highlights strong differences between these two soundscapes. For example, the five minute spectrograms reveal contrasting sound amplitudes, contrasting colors, uh, depending on the frequency bands, the Y axis, and along the time, which are the X axis. Thus, we looked for the six acoustic metrics uh, most able to reflect this contrast in relation with uh, the, the, the level of the six key function. For example, uh, sound level in the lower frequencies was highly correlated with habitat complexity. Also, the temporal variability of the soundscapes was correlated with the abundance of predators. The six correlations provided a key to better understand the temporal variations of the six echoacoustic indices, which would be recorded during the continuous monitoring. So we installed the permanent autonomous recording station at one of the nine sites. The hydrophone was at 12 meter depth, uh, depth on the outer slope. Data were transmitted uh, to a terrestrial interface through a 600 meters cable and stored on NARD drives. We first explored the journal variation of the soundscape, and we observed marked journal cyclicity of the six indices, which confirmed uh, their link with biological activities. At the year scale, we observed a seasonal trend with peaks during austral summer in November, uh, December, January, and we also observed lunar periodicity and bias indices. This combination of uh, indices allowed to take the pulse uh, of the reef all along the year. Uh, to complement uh, this approach, we focused on quantifying parrotfish scraping intensity, which is a key process in coral reefs, essential for reef resilience. We gathered a data set of more than 4,600 events and we developed a classifier to automatically detect uh, these events. Then we applied it to the nearly one year data set. The number of daily detection was highly variable throughout the year, uh, ranging from a few dozens to 3,000 scraping events. We found strong relationships with environmental data, such as solar radiation, tidal range, uh, or day length, and the consistency of these relationships with the results of numerous studies on parrot fishes confirmed the relevance of passive acoustics for monitoring scraping intensity. These results uh, overall contribute to improve the capacities of the TAF to monitor Europa Island's coral reef. Whether it is through ecoacoustic indices or automated detection, ecoacoustic monitoring provides new information about the temporal dynamics of the ecosystem. This new tool can considerably help in detecting disturbances and in monitoring the ecosystem's response, like after a bleaching event, for example. It can also identify specific periods of biological activity. In addition, it provides a complementary information to visual surveys with a more holistic approach. As such, the implementation of this new tool directly helps Europa's manager to respond to her objective, uh, such as to maintain the functioning of coral reef ecosystems, to develop um, uh, to improve, sorry, uh, the knowledge about biodiversity and habitats, to contribute to a baseline of scientific observatory and manage touristic activities to limit their impact among uh, others. 
so the tool implemented at Europe Island can facilitate uh, the, or the orientation of management measures, but also the monitoring of the efficiency of these measures. Uh, however, we identified uh, several limits during this project. Um, the need for more powerful computing device than standard computers was highlighted to efficiently handle data. In addition, uh, a certain damage the transmission cable, highlighting that more simple systems could be more sustainable. Another main limit was the transmission of the tool to managers. Transmission worked very well with field agents who were almost independent in data collection and maintaining of the station. However, office agent uh, failed to implicate, uh, which shows that handling process need to be fully automated from the upload of raw data to the production of uh, graphics. I will end uh, with some perspective. So passive uh, acoustic monitoring provides a unique opportunity to create standardized uh, monitoring networks at large, at large uh, spatial scale. I insist on the term standardized. <laughs> um, and Corcopa gave the impulsion to such network which with a validated proof of concept. Now the main perspective is to build uh, regional acoustic monitoring networks, for example, in the Southwest Indian Ocean. And this could be achieved relying on adapted funding such as the best programs, of course, uh, but also Biopama of the fundings proposed by the Wyansa. The availability of easy to use, robust and autonomous recorders make this possible. Uh, data handling is already partly automated and can be improved and a lot of development are, possi are possible depending on specific needs uh, for example the bulb detection for quantifying illegal activities uh, but also the detection of dolphins and whales uh, in addition the standardized dat data collected can typically supply regional information systems Nonetheless, uh, international entities can facilitate the acceptance of this new generation of ecological indicators by managers by integrating acoustic metrics within their uh, dashboards. A first step uh, has been made by the Global Ocean Observing System with the creation of an essential oceanic variable called Ocean Sound. And we can hope that Others, like the International Coral Reef Initiative will follow. Um, if you want to learn more about the project, you can find dedicated web pages on UMR Entropy and Panorama websites. You can also find the poster on the, an article uh, on the, the Panorama page or on my ResearchGate uh, profile. And you can see a documentary by typing uh, Corcopa on YouTube. So I would like to thank uh, all the collaborators and funders of this project, uh, especially the U European Commission uh, through the Best 2.0 program. And thank you for your attention. And I will be pleased to answer your questions later. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Simon. I'm glad you have been able to share already uh, important lessons learned and some in insight for uh, uh, any uh, other stakeholders or organization willing to, to test it or to, to deploy this approach. Um, I invite uh, our dear panelists and attendees to, to specify if they have any questions. Mm, I see there are very few. <laughs> um, Lucas, could you please uh, invite them to, to specify their question? Yeah, hi everyone again. Uh, so we have two questions. Uh, maybe I can uh, read the first one from Michel Scherer, um, which is how far can you detect parrot fish scrapping sounds? And this is uh, for Simon to answer directly. And uh, maybe uh, Simon, uh, two others from uh, Williams Ben. 
Um, the first one is uh, whether you think uh, the scrapper classifier uh, will work on other reefs acoustic data sets or is it unique to the Reunion Island? Do you plan to share this in the future if it could be applied elsewhere? And uh, the last question is uh, what was the reasoning behind recording uh, up to um, uh, 50 uh, QHZ and uh, what would be the benefits cost of recording uh, at uh, smaller bands? Um, the questions can be read on the, on the chat as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your uh, very interesting questions, very relevant. Um, so the, the, the question of the um, detectability uh, distance uh, is not uh, solved. Um, we, we don't know. We, we could make the study because we coupled the uh, cameras and uh, the hydrophone. So it could be uh, a study which is made. But um, because, while the, the hydrophone is fixed, the, the, the detection distance is the same all along the year. So we, we did not focus on this uh, particular aspect, but it's a really interesting question. Um, I think it's um, about maybe five meters, uh, five meter maximum around the, the hydrophone. On the question of, uh, yes, I will here was a question of the replicability. I've made the test because the um, classifier was um, developed on Europa's data set. And I've made the, the test on uh, data from uh, New Caledonia, so in the Pacific uh, Ocean. And it works. Uh, it's less powerful. It detects far less uh, events than in Europa. But uh, it works, so I, I think it it could be a first step, um, a facilitating step to develop classifiers uh, specific to other regions. Um, sorry, I where are the question in the chat? But it says his microphone doesn't work. Sorry about that, Mark. But you, we have your question in front of yes. us. Yes, yes, I've just uh, find the Q and R. Um, da, 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 da. So yes, uh, we want to share it. We are uh, finishing the, 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 the publication on this uh, subject. So we will share the code and uh, make uh, everybody um, able to apply uh, it in uh, its own situation. Um, the reasoning behind recording up to 50 kilohertz, uh, it's far too high um, on, on coral reefs, um, but it was the, the equipment we had, it, it was a, yes, no, no, no really choice. Uh, I think on coral reefs, uh, record until uh, 10 or 20 kilo is uh, far less uh, sufficient. Smell. Yes, small, so yeah, record a, a small band, you will uh, earn uh, energy and uh, space, uh, space on the uh, hard drives. Uh, has been applied to low enforcement. Um, good question. I don't know in coral reef, on coral reefs, no, but um, maybe. Be maybe yes. Uh, for example, on um, uh, what the name? Um, literal, uh, literal uh, working uh, huge uh, chantier. <laughs> uh, you there are now uh, rules, acoustic uh, rules, uh, but you you cannot uh, pass through. Uh, in other words, uh, to you must respect uh, cert certain uh, uh, sound amplitude at uh, one kilometer from the the, the work. Uh, so I think it's uh, more or less everything. Uh, don't hesitate if you have a further question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Simon. Um, what we will do is Thank that uh, we will um, invite our dear attendees to, to hear uh, from another experience in terms of eco-acoustic. And we will still have time for uh, questions uh, after his presentation. 
and we can uh, open definitely uh, the dialogue on your respective experience. Well, thank you. We can see already uh, the, the great uh, asset and interest to share uh, experiences with uh, all this uh, very relevant uh, question. Fran, I will invite you to present your, your experience. Did you hear me? Yes. And did you see normally my screen now? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So I have to put in presentation mode. It should work. Okay. Are you able to see my, my slide? That's perfect. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Just uh, before I start my, uh, my um, speech, I would like to thank Carol and also BEST program to this initiative. It is really nice uh, for us to present our first steps in this interesting project about uh, the black coral ecosystem, uh, trying to use different methods, uh, so um, acoustics, uh, but another approach uh, compared to the Simon Expose. So uh, just uh, in few, in few numbers, on few, um, in few uh, words, uh, Bicharm projects. Bicharm project is um, is, an is an initiative integrated with a multidisciplinary team. It uh, belongs to different uh, institute and ONGs. Uh, the project will take uh, thirty months, uh, so we are more or less uh, on the middle. We have some delays uh, related with the COVID situation, but we have some initial results. So the budget is uh, circa 49,000 euros. Uh, that um, implies four main activities that I described uh, later, uh, including uh, two thrill field expedition in Lanzarote, which is the island in where we developed this project. Um, uh, while that's wrote in the in the in, in fact in the map that you can see this is the eight islands that um, of the archipelago and the black point is the the the, the areas or the places in where uh, black coral forests are, are are observed and as you can see in lanzarote there is a uh, few probably is related with the depth because these points uh, are related with uh, 50 meters depth and normally black corals are um, observed uh, deeper, but uh, Lanzarote has a special uh, characteristic. So uh, the area we will work is it's called Playa Chica. It's a kind of lateral lab because uh, the working size, the, this this forest is very close to the to the to the to the village. So it kind of allows to study all the different impacts or effects of the coastal development, which is kind of very important activity in the Canary Islands. Um, so just to introduce the black coral forest, the black coral forest is um, animal dominated ecosystem. So an animal, uh, marine animal forest, which is mainly composed uh, for with uh, foreign species, Antipatella volastoni, that is able to create 3D structures uh, in where a lot of taxa uh, are able to live and uh, with different uh, function and ecosystem services like nursery, refuge, or even uh, uh, works as carbon sinks or fishery areas. Uh, regarding the occurrence, uh, these forests are uh, normally observed in the um, subtropical Eastern Atlantic from 20, 30 meters depth till more than 1,000. However, for this species in particular, we have no any information about uh, the extension or even uh, about uh, the functions are the ecosystem services delivered. Just add that this forest can there sometimes there there became can become bigger and some trees or some this some of these colonies can reach more than two meters high. This is uh, one of the polyps, uh, the unit of this kind of big city that you can observe here in the in the pictures. So another ecological uh, function of this forest that is really really important is what's happened with the with the current flux when they arrive to this forest. Here you have in this in this picture you have a kind of rocky area without without forest, and here you have another another area with the forest. So with the current arrives here, there is an effect or interaction between 
the, the, the currents or this, this turbulence with the structure of the forest. Uh, and this interaction can produce the sedimentation of different particles, the retention of larvae that live inside, and uh, as occurring in terrestrial realm with forest and wind, for example, uh, this uh, upper part of the of the trees can also retain uh, food that come came from with the current. So in this in this situation, uh, acoustic techniques techniques can help us to understand what is the the interaction or the influence of these you know, of these of these flux. And uh, therefore, we can estimate or can define a kind of minimum conservation unit in terms of the threshold of the structure of the habitat, in terms of density of trees or, or colonies, able to change the current profile and therefore uh, keep their ecosystem function, as I mentioned before, uh, and the ecosystem service delivery. So, in other words, we will be able to differentiate. Uh, what is a forest uh, from uh, some kind of a sparse colonies. Okay, so it's, this is something that we, we think that is really useful in terms of output of this project for, for decision making, for example. But we come for, for another problem is uh, we have to map this forest. And the, um, the, usual, the usual techniques that we can use in, in shallower areas are not uh, working in, with black corals uh, because uh, their bathymetrical range. So we have to, uh, again uh, go for, to, um, to acoustic techniques and in particular two, two uh, active acoustic techniques. One is the size scan sonar, which uh, give us information about the seafloor physical structure. And the other technique is the multi echo sounder. Okay, so this second technique provides uh, data about the bathymetry, also 3D images that uh, are correlated sometimes with other characteristics of the sea bottom, like uh, the slope, the rugosity uh, of the terrain, etc. Okay, which is really important to characterize or to describe this, this, this forest. So in terms of B-charm objectives, uh, we have four that is uh, correlated with the four activities. So the first one is try to, to fine tune the acoustic method table to map and characterize this, this forest. Uh, then try to define this minimum, conservati minimum conserver conservation unit. And then try to also characterize one of the um, ecosystem services, which is related with the um, the fish, uh, the fish, fish, fishing, uh, fisheries communities that inhabit the, the forest. And the last one that is the, the last but not the less important is try to increase the public awareness about the importance of uh, black coral forest. Uh, and in particular in, in, in this island, because uh, Lanzarote has no, um, didn't, didn't have um, uh, forests uh, on the rest on the rest of Riam, but they have a very beautiful underwater forest. So it's, I think it's very important to uh, increase the awareness uh, of local stakeholders about uh, the, this, this particular uh, ecosystems. So just a brief description of the activities that we have uh, started uh, since the beginning of the project last, last September. So in terms of mapping and, uh, and characterization of the, of the forest, the idea is to combine the previous mentioned uh, acoustic techniques, so the um, side scan sonar and multi vehicle sounder, uh, at the same time using also uh, video cameras to, um, to, to ground to thin the, the information. And the range that we work is, this is Playa Chica, the village that I showed you before, and this is the area and the bathymetric range that we, we, we have, uh, we are scheduling is uh, from 20, 25 meters till 100. So the idea is to cover more or less uh, 100 hectares at the end of the project. The second activity is related with the definition of this minimum, minimum conservation unit. So in, this, in these diagrams, you can see the dive site, so which is the Playa Chica, and this is the, the more or less diagram about the, about the house, the coastal areas with this very, sand platforms and as you have rocky areas at the black coral forest that starts from 45-50 meters 
So the idea is to use uh, other, other devices that provides uh, very, very precise um, current profiles in, uh, in different areas of the, of, the, of the forest at different depths. And also we will try to define also the density and height of the forest in terms of a number of colonies, high. So this, this work has already started and we are really surprised because um, there are some areas in where the, the density are really high and, the, um, and the, the height of the colonies also are sometimes even more than two meters. Um, also, we will try to complete the information with different environmental data such as the temperature profile or also the capacity of this forest to, to catch uh, sediments in between, between uh, or inside them. The third activity is related with the characterization of fish communities, inhabitants, so again, the same areas, but this time uh, we extend our, our profile area along the bathymetrical depth, depth uh, from the shallower areas till uh, 90, 100 meters. Uh, and we will perform uh, underwater visual sensors, sensors using um, divers, but also probably using cameras uh, all along the, the, rocky, the rocky areas. Something that is important to remark, and I, I will show you uh, after in the, the preliminary results, it, that this forest uh, needs always a substrate to live, so um, they can they are not lay, uh, able to live uh, over the sun. They live uh, they need always a kind of harsh or su substrate, even if it's covered by sun. Uh, under the sun, there is always uh, rocky 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 reefs. And then finally, the activity four uh, regarding project communication plan. We have already some. Uh, we have uh, uh, already developed a web page of the project and different uh, different social networks tools. And then the idea is to also participate in different one day events that are scheduled for the next year. And we have also already established some collaboration with the um, island government and the biosphere reserve to develop uh, some pilot workshops with the schools and also some interaction uh, with, with the stakeholders during campaigns that will be scheduled in the next, in the next year. So in terms of preliminary results, we, we have some analysis of the data of, um, of uh, acoustic monitoring using sonar, side scan sonar and multi beam so in these four diagrams, you have the results. This is size scan sonar results in terms of seabed substrate. So here in yellow, there is sun areas and in, in brown is the rocky. So unfortunately, unfortunately, we are not able to catch the presence of uh, black hole forest because um, well, this probably we, there is still a lot of work, but uh, in fact, this uh, rocky mask the uh, the signal of the of the of the branches of the of um, of the black corals. So um, the, the also the probably one solution is try to put our devices more close to the bottom to to increase the signal. Um, but the area is really challenging because the slopes uh, went down really, really quick. So uh, with the boat, it's not easy, but we are still working. We have some, some ideas to improve the results. So the other, the other um, diagrams are related with multi-beam um, multi, uh, multi eco-sounder. So this is the, the, um, the bathymetry that about the slope and the rugosity. And However, with this, with this uh, data, we have correlate the density and height of the black corals uh, with, uh, with depth and also with uh, the currents. So um, this correlation uh, data will be used for the next campaigns. But, but we have some new hope in terms of results and because from the um, from the ecosander data, we can normally the signal is catch from the bottom, but we can also register some data about the water 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 column skater. So it is the signal 
that the device received from the bottom till more or less one meter. So if you remember, our red coral's uh, height is more or less uh, more than one, 100 centimeters. So uh, here in this diagram, you can see this is a transect made with cameras. So at the beginning, there is no coral. So you can see this in the, in, the picture, in the pictures. And then when we went down, we arrived to this area in where there is a dense black coral forest, okay? So uh, using this data of water column, we can split the signal uh, between the signal uh, really close to the, to the seafloor, so around 10 centimeters, and also the signal uh, till 100 centimeters, okay? So this transit correspond to this transit here. So as you can see, once we are approaching to the place in where coral uh, black coral forests are, the signal are coupling. So it means that probably this, this uh, signal is related with the presence of black coral. So this is a very good, uh, very good uh, preliminary result that uh, encourages us to the next campaigns uh, to obtain some uh, beautiful maps of uh, black coral. So I'm really happy with this last results and uh, yes we have some some problems with the pandemic situation as some people of our teams come from from Europe so uh, but let's hope that situation will improve in the next year and uh, we will uh, obtain a beautiful results as Simon and Simon show in his during his presentation so just before finish I would like to thanks uh, again the organizer and also all my colleagues this wonderful team from different institutions that helped me and learned me a lot of things during this beautiful adventure. Thank you very much. I am open to your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Francisco. It was uh, very interesting and as well informative. Um, I will open the floor and before asking maybe uh, one, uh, is there any question for more attendees? Uh, please, again, feel free to use the chat so that we can uh, then give you the, the, the floor. Je vois qu'il y a une question de Monsieur Akumamid. There is a question from Mr. Akumamid. Uh, Luca, could you open the, the microphone of Mr. Akumamid? Yes, he should now be able to talk. Hey, bonjour. Bonjour, bienvenue. <laughs> uh, bienvenue. Bon, je suis uh, Amit Akum. Je suis ingénieur en sciences de la mer. Uh, je suis Algérie, voilà. Donc, euh, je travaille au commissariat national de l'électoral, qui est un organisme, euh, qui est un organisme étatique euh, de protection de l'électoral. Donc, c'est un organisme sous tutelle euh, du ministère de l'environnement algérien. Juste une question pour l'identification de la plante endémique, euh, la célèbre plante endémique de la, de la Méditerranée, qui est la Posidonie. Et, et comme euh, il, il est très important de protéger cette plante et qui est euh, en même temps le poumon de la Méditerranée justement, puisqu'elle produit beaucoup d'oxygène, en plus euh, elle forme tout un écosystème pour, euh, pour la vie sous-marine euh, de cette mer méditerranéenne, est-ce qu'il y a-t-il euh, un moyen d'identifier euh, or que, c'est-à-dire euh, au-delà de, de, de l'identification traditionnel, c'est-à-dire est-ce qu'il y a des moyens d'utiliser de, des satellites ou des cartes sous-marines pour identifier, c'est-à-dire les, les, les six grandes herbiers, voilà, donc mm -hmm. le, la localisation, bien le, la répartition, c'est-à-dire l'identification des habitats importants, les habitats de la Posidonie. Voilà, je mm -hmm. vous Merci. Je vais laisser Simon et, et Francisco euh, vous répondre. Merci, madame. Et, oui. On vous répond en français, on vous répond en anglais, comme vous voulez. En français, c'est mieux. Bon, il n'y a pas de problème, même si en anglais, ça ne me pose oui. pas de problème. <rire> pas de souci. Donc, euh, et, euh, de ma part, en fait, euh, bon, les techniques que j'ai présentées euh, en termes acoustiques euh, sont déjà utilisées pour la, la recensement de la, des, des champs de Posidonie en Méditerranée. Toute la Méditerranée, je pense que toute la Méditerranée française 
en termes de, des champs de projections, ils sont déjà cartographiés. Mais euh, vu qu'il n'y a pas ces limitations de la lumière, on peut utiliser des autres systèmes. Il y a des gens qui utilisent même des drones euh, pour cartographier des champs de projections. Donc, euh, donc je, je pense même des images satellites peut-être sont, sont utilisables. Mais les drones et les, 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 les techniques, euh, même euh, il y a des gens qui utilisent des méthodes beaucoup plus simples avec l'observation directe, hein, vu que la profondeur, c'est beaucoup, beaucoup moins un facteur restreint par rapport à l'observation du, du champ de projet Voilà. Merci. Merci, Francisco. Simon, tu veux rajouter quelque chose euh, non, ça me fait... Enfin, j'aurais pas fait une meilleure réponse. Euh, je pense qu'effectivement, le, le, là, la clé, c'est que c'est des habitats vraiment superficiels. Enfin, je ne sais pas jusqu'à combien de dizaines de mètres ça descend, mais le, le fait que ce soit superficiel bah, permet des, des méthodes aériennes, euh, peut-être multispectrales, hyperspectrales aussi, qui doivent bien fonctionner vu euh, ces côtés euh, chlorophyllien, quoi, euh, avec la posidonie. Après, bon, l'approche acoustique passive peut permettre un peu de renseigner euh, finalement quel est le la vie qu'il y a sur ces herbiers. Quoi. Parce qu'on peut avoir un herbier vu du ciel, deux herbiers vont être les mêmes, mais il y en a un où il y a énormément de poissons, et ça, on ne va pas le voir depuis le, le satellite. Donc, euh, voilà, juste un petit complément, euh, éventuellement, ouais. par acoustique passive. Merci, merci voilà. beaucoup. Monsieur Akumami, je vous invite à nous contacter, et si vous voulez avoir de plus amples informations, échanges avec Simon et Francisco, on vous mettra en contact. Ça vous va Ou ils peuvent mettre leur email, comme ça, vous avez directement leur contact. Je vais passer maintenant, je vais revenir en, en anglais. Uh, is there any other question to our uh, panelists regarding their uh, experiences using uh, eco-acoustic methods? I see one question from Nitasa. Lucas, could you open the microphone? Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Welcome. Yeah. Hi. Uh, wonderful. Both the talks have been wonderful uh, and very informative. I was wondering what is the kind of um, uh, rate of functional failures uh, of the gadgets and the cameras laid along the transects and how, how many transects were laid um, around uh, uh, your landscape? Please, Fran and Simon, yes. feel free to jump in. <laughs> okay, so in, in our case, the idea is first we have a kind of uh, a schedule plan for the transects, for the for, uh, for the devices, for the multi beam or the size scan sonar. And then we try to uh, follow or try to do the same thing with a camera. But the, the camera that we utilize still now is a very simple system. It's a kind of a GoPro. That uh, with a with um, with a monitor on the surface, so we we trying to track the position and the water. Uh, and we follow the, the, the same trust that we, we use with the um, with the acoustic device. So then uh, we try to correlate the images that we use uh, with these cameras with the data that we we obtain from the from the devices. And the big issue, the big challenge that we have, and we try to resolve this problem uh, next year, is not the images, is the position of the camera and the water. Because uh, mm -hmm. it's really important to correlate the position of the, in terms of geographical position of the, of the data, of the, of the yeah. images, with the, with the um, acoustic uh, results. So this is something that we are working on probably next year. For the next campaigns we will resolve, we're trying to implement uh, some kind of underwater GPS to really know what are our cameras respect. And probably the correlation of the maps we will improve because normally the maps are, the images, acoustic images are normally correlated with the cameras. So if the cameras are yeah. some error, obviously the data yeah. are not, uh, but yes. So you will is... be validating uh, the um, uh, errors, right? Sorry? You'll be rectifying the errors uh, between your, uh, um, maps and the gps uh, located uh, cameras exactly exactly okay exactly okay. it's a tough task yes yes 
Yeah, and but... would the tidal would the tidal movements disturb the locations of the Sorry? fixed cameras? Sorry. Tidal movements. Would the tidal movements? Ah yes, but in this in this uh, situation, tidal is not a problem. It's more currents that is a problem because oh. at that depth, uh, sometimes there is some underwater currents. So the position of the boat is uh, not related uh, with the position of the camera. So we have to put a lot of weight to be sure that the camera is uh, perpendicular to the boat. But anyway, sometimes uh, the current is so strong. So I think this GPS is really the, the good solution to implement our results. I think that the correlation and the data will, will change uh, a lot, even if the, yeah. the, the, the results that we have till now are promising, I think uh, it will improve with this new, this new uh, approach. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you, thank you for your question. Thank you, Francisco. Um, Simon, would you like to, to share your experience regarding this question around the failure or little issues? Um, uh, we, it, uh, we, we are not, uh, I put on the camera, uh, we, are, we are not really this kind of problem um, in the project. So, uh, no, I don't think. Uh, Look at you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I had, uh, over kind of, uh, of problems, but not uh, not this. <laughs> Good, thank you. Uh, I will um, maybe ask to our regional coordinator who is uh, attending this meeting in the Indian Ocean, Estelle Crochelet, to say a few words, um, as she has been um, very keen on, on following uh, the activities as well as preparing with, uh, with us as well this, uh, this event. Estelle. Yeah, hello. Hello. You hear me well? Yes, yes we do. Okay. Um, sorry, Carol, what, what did you want me to say? <laughs> to to sh share your insight regarding this very interesting um, eco-acoustic uh, projects and what could be maybe uh, the follow-up use in the Indian Ocean region. Okay, uh, yeah, we actually we we were very happy that the project uh, Corcopa worked uh, very well in the Indian Ocean, um, and it's um, um, first step to to implement this kind of study uh, here in the region, um, and potentially in Reunion Island uh, through a different um, uh, through the best uh, program also. Um, I'm, uh, I don't. I don't know, Carol. What? <laughs> what you no, want? This is fine. Add, this is fine. Very yeah. fine. Perfect. Thank you. And maybe uh, talking about experience solution, uh, um, I will dare to ask to Aisa how or, or to. Uh, a project coordinator can join the community of uh, Panorama. I understand mm -hmm. there is a blue community, so maybe you could uh, see as well how, how uh, a solution provider they could uh, further exchange their experience. Yeah, sure. um, thank you, Carol. This is very interesting. And uh, yeah, Panorama is about connecting solution seekers and solution provider. And and. Um, when I was uh, following your presentation, I was really, you know, like, this is, I was like, wow, this is very great. And this is the kind of solution we really want to promote within Panorama. And you, you guys have been done, you know, you did a very good job and we need to duplicate. This, not, this is not the right word, but you, many people can get inspired, inspiration from what you have been done because it's, this is a success story it's a best practice we are looking for and i would be really happy to uh, uh, like you can like send me an email we exchange and then i can connect you with our um, blue solutions uh, thematic community they are, they're also looking for such solutions to promote and i can just say welcome in advance into panorama and our thematic community and looking forward to promote your solutions and see how people can get inspired by your solution and duplicate elsewhere you know this is very good thank you carol for connect for this connection because i i, I wasn't aware of this good solution existing 
yeah. Thank you. It is our, our pleasure actually to not only uh, support uh, such a great project, but to see how they can inspire other stakeholders and collaborate with uh, other uh, actually organization or inspire the stakeholders to further um, implement such a, such a approach. So maybe this will lead me to ask you uh, a question because as we see, this is really deepening the understanding, the mapping, the knowledge about uh, those ecosystems. So how do you see, uh, I would say, um, the other follow-up activities in terms of supporting monitoring, in terms of supporting conservation uh, action, or even decision makers? Both of you, uh, Francisco and Simon, how do you see the uptake from uh, conservation on more specifically more conservation action and political uptake uh, me first simon yeah. or okay <laughs> so uh, in terms of uh, our particular habitats um, in fact there is no protection about these mm -hmm. habitats in canary mm -hmm. islands or even in the national territory okay i think there is some rules about the species that lives in the Mediterranean, which is not the same that we find in Canary Islands. But as you can see, uh, these habitats are, are sometimes uh, very close to the coast and in other islands even shallower. So the impact in terms of coastal development is really, really important. So we have no idea the habitats are probably affected by the probably sedimentation or issues that are linked with the coastal development. And I think it is, in fact, when I, when I call the island government and tell us our idea, I told us our ideas, they were really keen to understand and, uh, and, uh, and see uh, what is this black coral forest. So uh, they are really happy to, to know, they are really happy to participate. Then let's see if we, are, if we were able to, um, uh, arrive to the decision makers, but at least there is some noise that came from the these deeper waters, and uh, we will try to this noise increase. and uh, And I think the idea at the end of the project is the the um, Lanzarote is able to be proud of this forest that are underwater, not <laughs> on the mm. So uh, this is idea. This is mm. our idea. Definitely, and, we see how you can provide information and evidence about uh, this uh, important ecosystem and lead the local authority uh, maybe to, to uh, apply or to adopt uh, new measures um, so that um, this uh, black coral forest can be uh, further preserved and conserved because it can be, uh, in addition to their ecological services, uh, a wealth in terms of maybe uh, diving opportunity <laughs> yes yes but i think there is other consistency that are really important uh probably yeah. fisheries there are a lot of, uh, for our yeah for our uh, first uh, first results uh, there is a lot of uh, juveniles that uh, mm -hmm. using this habitats are refuge and there are probably other there is also another discussion about uh, sequestration of carbon Sure. Even not probably because uh, they grow very slow. This, this, there are some colonies that can reach uh, more than 100, 200, even 1,000 years old. But there is this structure, this forest that are able Indeed. to keep. Yeah. So yeah. the carbon sequestration is another issue that is really important. To be so measured. to be continued, definitely. And we look forward to hear from, uh, from your new results uh, next year. I will uh, hand over to Simon. Uh, what is, uh, from your point of view, what could be the follow-up activities uh, thanks to the Corcopa project? How it could be scaled up? Or what could be its uh, actually uh, usefulness for monitoring uh, on this island, but maybe wider in the region? Uh, I think there are two, two main uh, points. Uh, one key point is uh, to, to uh, alert uh, decision maker that uh, overs indicators are very important uh, with uh, emerging technologies. We have a, a panel of, uh, of tools uh, we, which we can uh, implement. Um, so it's uh, we uh, the idea is not to to enter in a gadget uh, 
spending and uh, with, with no sense, but uh, something like sound is really important and until now totally uh, neglected. So, um, so I think this will really help to, to work with managers uh, who have their, uh, their uh, dashboard with some uh, indicators, but sound is not uh, among these. So this, uh, this will need to, to, to progress. And um, on the question of scaling up, definitely, definitely it's, the, it's a, a great uh, opportunity uh, which we have uh, with, um, with uh, Ecoacoustic uh, because of one, uh, one recorder is not so, uh, it's quite cheap <laughs> to say it uh, another way. So uh, we, we can really uh, deploy uh, this kind of recorders uh, in uh, many localities and have a standardized view at the same moment uh, of what is going on where and uh, take uh, manage management decision at upscale the uh, scale because uh, nowadays it's at the very local scale that decisions are, are made but uh, if you only see what you have uh, around and not uh, what is doing the, the neighbor, you, you won't go very, very far, I think. So uh, it's this kind of, uh, of tool uh, really uh, allow, allows the, um, uh, the, 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 the articulation uh, between uh, from local to uh, global uh, scales. Perfect. Thank you. And I can see you, you are inspiring uh, an, um, an organization. There is a comment from Cosmin Parlog indicating that they are an NGOs and they would like to implement uh, such a similar project in the Black Sea. So again, you will find right. in the chat the emails uh, from uh, Francisco and Simon. Feel free to contact them and to make uh, the ball rolling further. We are glad that they can inspire and they can be, uh, they could be maybe new project using your, your approach and your uh, experience. So I don't think additional question. I think we are coming to an end to our event. I would like to thank warmly our, our speakers, Francisco and Simon. Thank you again for um, embodying such nicely um, best project. I think it can be very much inspiring. I look forward for you to join actually the Panorama community and to hear from um, follow up uh, action. Thank you. Thank you again very much to, to you all. And thank you to Aisa for teaming up for this nice event. Thank you. Thank you.